Uh, thank you. Senator Seward. Thank you, Mr Acting Deputy President. Repealing the mining tax would destroy a precious opportunity that we have not only to help vulnerable Australians now, but also to set the scene for the future, to ensure that we do have a strong, safe, sustainable community that shares in the profits from our resources. The government would have you believe that this is about the economy and jobs, but this is really about their big business mates and their big mining mates, allowing them to make more and more money, to send more of it overseas from our resources. Resources that are finite and once they are dug up, we don't get a second opportunity to dig them up. We have wasted that opportunity to ensure that the benefits from those resources flow to all in, those, in, in our communities not just to their big mining mates, not just to the big end of town. Once those resources, are, the profits from those resources are shipped off sea, overseas, communities will not benefit and they haven't been in Western Australia or a section of our uh, West Australian community hasn't been. Miners, the government keeps saying that miners have been hurt by this and it's affecting our economy. We need to bear in mind that these miners have hardly paid anything. In fact, they haven't been hurt by this tax because they haven't been paying this tax. This mining tax is a mechanism for our um, nation and its people to gain from the exploitation of our resources. And in fact, the government wants to get rid of this tax just as it's starting to make money. And it's no wonder they're in such a big rush to get rid of it so they can help, uh, help their mining mates. The mining boom is in the, in the process of transitioning from the capital intensive phase to the production phase, and that's um, beginning now. And this is, of course, just when the super profits will occur, because um, the revenue from production will be rising while they are less able to deduct, um, the, deduct um, their capital investments off what they should be paying. Mining companies have been able to price their assets using today's inflated market values and then claim massive annual deductions under this amount, um, not what they are actually spending on capital investment. Once again, another reason why they haven't been paying um, the mining tax because they've been able to write down those capital investments. But now, as I said, as we move to more production phase, they're not going to be allowed to do that. In fact, we, of course, as Senator Milne outlined, um, proposed amendments to the, to the previous government's weak, weak, uh, weakened mining tax, and in fact, we would have had much more benefit um, if this chamber um, and the government had accepted our um, amendments to that mining tax. Nevertheless, this tax is important to Australia. It's important to Australian communities and particularly the most vulnerable um, communities. As Senator Milne pointed out, mining companies are largely foreign-owned, 83 per cent, which, of course, the, sharehold, the money that's made from our resources is largely benefiting those shareholders overseas. These profits are being e uh, exported um, along with our natural resources. Rather than addressing this, unfortunately, the ALP um, weakened the previous version um, of the mining tax and, and, of course, as was outlined previously, caved into the mining industries, uh, industry. Its loop, the tax's loopholes and weaknesses have seen this policy fall well short of what it could have delivered. Rather than fixing it now, however, Tony Abbott is moving um, yet again in favour of big business and overseas shareholders to, to get rid of this tax and of course that's at the expense of the Australian people. This repeal will significantly hurt low income earners and the most vulnerable in our community. It's unfortunate that yet again we're getting the interests of big business um, put in front of the environment and above the interests of Australian people. Rather than better schools and universities, um, help for Australians living in poverty, better housing and infrastructure. We have cuts being made and proposed across the board. It seems that there will be, we, we, we understand um, from all the government's hyperbole that they will be making more cuts in, 
in order. In, Order. We know that there will be more cuts coming in the, or the Commission of Audit, a cuts that this government refuses to articulate before the West Australian by-election on the 5th of April. Maybe on the 6th of April, after West Australians have voted, the government may release what they intend to do with the budget, what cuts they intend to make, how they intend to further hurt West Australian families. But of course, we won't know that until the 6th of April or beyond. The government is giving these big companies these tax breaks at the same time that they are slashing necessary supports. And this bill contains measures that affect the school kids bonus. Bon uh, payments that families rely on. People in Western Australia don't live in the land of milk and honey, as some would like to think that we do on the back of the boom. Try buying a house in my home state of Western Australia, trying to find affordable a rental, or in fact, if, you're, if you want to buy a house, it's further and further out of reach of, the, of people that are on low incomes. Look at the increasing number of homeless people in Western Australia, the unending disadvantage of Aboriginal people in Western Australia. They are not the people that are making money for the boom. They are the people that, in fact, should be helped by a mining tax. In Western Australia, we have squandered some of the benefits of the boom. Many people are hurting and we have a dual economy, those that are able to gain from the boom and those that haven't been. The, boom, the benefits of the boom have not been shared, and that's why we need a mining tax, so that we do get better sharing of the benefit of our resources. Western Australians, some Western Australians have seen some benefits from the boom, but not all have, all have benefited equally. The state's lowest income households are falling further behind the rest of the WA population. The mining boom has driven up the disposable income of some West Australians. As I said, not everyone is able to gain, has been gaining um, those benefits. A Curtin University report um, called Sharing the Boom, released just recently, showed the distribution of income and wealth in WA. And it shows a gap between the rich and the poor and that it is growing. The wealthiest 10 per cent of households earn up to four times as much as the poorest. The report author, Professor Alan Duncan, says that mining, the mining boom improved the circumstances of many households in Western Australia, but there has been a rise in income and wealth inequity, inequality. The gap between the richest and the poorest households in WA rose consistently since the acceleration of the mining boom in 2003-2004 to its peak in 2009 and 10, and at a greater rate than the rest of Australia. He said the highest income households are getting richer and the medium income households are also earning substantially more, but the lowest income households in the state are falling further behind. He said income growth across the boom period has created a greater gap between high and low income households both in terms of income and wealth, and that low-income families in WA had failed to share the benefits of the boom at the same rate as higher-income households, which emphasises the need to support those, those people on low income who may not benefit from the same standard living increases experienced by the rest of the population. That is what a mining tax is for, to help the people that aren't benefiting from the massive profits from the boom that the mining companies are making. Then there, of course, is the um, other impacts on other industries in Western Australia, such as on agriculture and other sectors, for example, in aged care that can't compete for higher wages um, that are paid by the mining industry. And of course, it's, it's areas like um, aged care and community sector that have been highlighted in Deloitte's report released today about where our new jobs are going to come from. This repeal cancels some important payments and supports offered to vulnerable people across Australia who I've just highlighted are the ones that haven't benefited from the boom. And these are important payments for people in Western Australia. This is about this tax should be about how to more equitably share the benefits of our resources. 
The government says it can't afford to increase New Start and it can't return single parents to the parenting payment and that we need to slash the number of people on the disability support pension and that we have to raise the pension rate because there's too many older Australians. It says we can't afford this, but apparently we can afford to get rid of a tax that is about sharing the benefits of our resources. So if we had a proper mining tax, we could afford to raise New Start. We could afford to help single parents. We could afford to help people with disability. And we wouldn't, of course, then be denigrating those people with disability, which is what this government is trying to do in order to justify cutting funding for them. And we wouldn't be condemning older Australians to living on New Start because we want to raise the pension age. We would be able to afford to look after our fellow Australians, those that are doing it tough, those that are most vulnerable in our community. Let's have a quick look at the mining tax. The combined half-yearly profits are $14.6 billion. Without the MRRT in place, these, their profits would be $14.81 billion. In the scheme of things, while that money is a lot of money, it's not paying enough to the West Australian community. $14.6 billion is what they make after the mining tax. The government, instead of fixing the mining tax, want to repeal it. They want to make Australians pay to go and see their GP rather than standing up to the mining industry and making them pay from their super profit. That is a lot of money. What we have made from the mining tax is a small amount of money because the mining companies browbeat the previous government and have now talked to their mates in government and want to pay nothing rather than the small amount they have paid on what, by anybody's standards, is a large amount of money. The mining industry are oppo opposed this tax. Basically, they don't want to pay anything that they don't have to out of their super profit on the resources that are every Australian's resources and that every Australian should benefit from, not just some of them, as I have articulated is happening in Western Australia. Let's look at some of the programs that are going to be cut because the government wants to support its big business mining mates. The school kids bonus. Of course, this will impact most significantly on low-income families and single parents. Single parents who have already suffered blow after blow live in poverty and have been dumped onto Newstart. This will make it even harder for kids to be able to do well at school. Kids cannot do well at school if they're living in poverty. And then, of course, there's the low income superannuation contribution. At the same time that the government talks about the need to increase retire the um, retirement age because Australia can't afford it, this government is making a cash grab on retirement savings of one in three workers to the value of around $27,000 or 15 per cent of their expected retirement earnings. Again, get it? Low income superannuation. In other words, this is about some of the most vulnerable workers in our community. This was designed to help those on low and fixed incomes under $37,000 a year and to help them build up a modest amount of money for their retirement. This will affect women and young people particularly, and those that are employed on a casual basis. The industry Super Australia has said that axing the rebate will affect around 2 million working women, including 80 per cent of female part-time workers. Getting rid of this measure will deplete, one in every two, the, deplete the savings of one in every two working women. This is hurting Australians. These are the people that should be sharing from the super profits made from mining our resources. Older workers, particularly women, already face discrimination in the workplace, and I've spoken on that 
um, air, on that issue in this place many times and have a variety of obstacles to improving and expanding their superannuation. This makes it even harder. This contribution is attempting to redre redress the inequities in our, in our superannuation system, which favours high-income earners and does, does not help low-income earners significantly. By repealing this contribution, it will place a greater burden on future governments by increasing the reliance on the age pension. And then, of course, the government wants to increase the pension age and keep these people in low income and poverty even longer. This is a stupid measure. If you're a low, and, and the message is, if you're on a low income, particularly if you're a woman, this government doesn't care about you. It cares more about facilitating its big business mates. And then, of course, they're also getting rid of the income support bonus. And this was um, put in place to help income those on um, certain income support payments prepare for unexpected living costs. Thanks. And the payment is um, $105.80 um, if you're single, and it's paid twice a year. You may not think this is a significant amount of money, but it is if you are living in poverty on Newstart. It is important. It can make the difference between being able to pay a bill or make, meet a rent payment. It is important to the most vulnerable in our community. It is cruel and it is mean taking what is a relatively small amount of money to them but two vulnerable Australians, every cent counts. That money counts. These are just, of course, the payments that are being repealed when this bill is repealed. But then, of course, you've got all those programs that won't be funded. What about the National Partnership Agreement on Homeless? In Western Australia, we have 9,592,000 people who find themselves homeless every night. Of these, 15.6 per cent are under the age of 12. People in Western Australia find themselves homeless for many reasons, but the fact that rents are so high that affordable housing is impossible to find, driven up by the boom, which has not been shared equally, where the gap between rich and poor has increased, where the benefits of the boom haven't been shared equally, that's, this is another program that may not be funded by this government because they say they haven't got the revenue. Here's a mechanism to raise that revenue, to share the benefits of our resources in an, a more equitable way. And then, of course, we've got the government talking about making a two-tier system for people with disability. There will be the deserving people with disability and the undeserving people with disability who may be get stuck on Newstart for an exceedingly long time. And we're doing that again because we haven't got the revenue. And what about NDIS? Government's making hints all the time about slowing down the rollout because there's problems with the rollout. It's not just about that. It's because they don't want to pay for it. And then, of course, you've got people living in poverty on Newstart. They won't even give them a modest increase of $50 a week, well, which doesn't even go to half the difference between Newstart and the age pension. The government says the age of entitlement is over, but not if you're in the mining industry or you're a big business. The mining industry doesn't want to pay its fair share for our resources that will help the most vulnerable in our community and also help people plan for the future. They seem determined to make the, mo the lowest income earners and vulnerable members of our community pay for the fact that they want to give big miners tax breaks. Once again, they're making it clear that those people aren't important. The, Gre the Greens' plan would have made significantly more money out of the mining tax. But by not repealing this, we help 
469,344 West Australian families. That's, just, that's West Australian families. And keep, we help them keep $881 million over four years by not repealing this tax. Repealing this tax is a bad move.